my top 10 conflict resolution methods. Number one, accept conflict. Yeah, accept it. Conflict is natural and happens in every relationship, whether it's neurotypical or neurodiverse. So, since conflict is unavoidable, you may as well learn to manage it, not avoid it. For example, shutting down, melting down. True, there may be more conflict in a neurodiverse marriage than a neurotypical one, but that doesn't mean that something's going wrong. It's simply a sign that something needs to change. And it's an opportunity for growth, new understanding, and improved communication. So that's number one, accept conflict. Number two, analyze the problem. You want to clarify the specifics of the issue in question. Some questions that you can ask yourself are, what triggered the conflict? What happened during the conflict? What happened after the conflict? What was the level of intensity of the conflict? What am I afraid of losing? What am I afraid might happen? So number two, analyze the problem and most specifically, look at the fears that are involved. Number three, avoid defending yourself. Don't try to convince the other person that your point of view is more satisfactory than theirs. Number four, be a calming agent. Your response to an argument can escalate or de-escalate the intensity of the problem. You get to choose. Keep your voice at a normal volume. Keep your voice at a normal pitch. Relax your facial muscles. Take long, deep breaths between sentences. Slow down your speech. Number five, employ active listening. You're going to look interested. Provide some eye contact. No distractions. And paraphrase back what was heard to check for accuracy of your download. Number six, focus on the future. In conflict, you may tend to remember every single thing that ever bothered you about your spouse. Couples in conflict need to talk about the past sometimes, that's true, but they often dwell and ruminate on the past. You're ruminating about the past is you also re-injuring yourself because the incident happened once or twice, but if you think about it a hundred times, it feels like it's happened a hundred times. So often the best way to take ownership of the problem is to recognize that regardless of the past, the two of you need to create a plan to address the present conflict. Number seven, separate your spouse from the problem. In other words, view the problem as a specific behavior or a set of circumstances rather than attributing negative feelings to your spouse. Number eight, stay on topic. Work on problem A only, not A, B, and C. When discussing things, don't wander off into other unaddressed issues before the current one is resolved. If a new issue comes up, in other words, you're talking about problem A and then problem B comes up, that's fine. But just simply recognize that as a second problem and the two of you agree that we will address this second problem in the next conversation. Number nine, use neutral language. When couples are in conflict, they want to use inflammatory language, profanity, name calling, exaggerations. All of that escalates the argument. Restate inflammatory language in a more objective way to help make the information less emotionally loaded. And lastly, number 10, end on a positive note. In the conversation with a touch on the shoulder, a hug, a kiss on the cheek, I love you even when we argue statement, and anything else, they can kind of put out the flame. So, those are my top 10 conflict resolution methods. Good luck. <laughs>